as I said, we've been working for the last several years on trying to experiment the bot applications in different contexts and all that. So these were some of the initial units where we tried kind of doing it for a single household, trying to work with basic masonry constructions and all this was before the prefabrication days. Now, in fact, we are trying to move towards uh, prefabricated single household systems. These were a little probably over designed at that time, but trying to again have the system of connected number of settler, the baffled reactor and aerobic filter and we actually have done about some 10-15 systems like this and they are working reasonably well. The basic uh, principle continues. Uh, then there are also several systems done by CDD on cluster level DWOT system. This is actually a small artist village that we have done near Maharashtra where we had about 50 uh, houses uh, where, so what we did is that because it was a very challenging terrain, we decided to actually go for small cluster level treatment system. So each house has a has a small settler. Uh, these are some of the houses. So essentially, the the treatment pattern is like this: the sewage and sludge from each house goes to an individual household level settler, and from there only the effluents are piped and they go to a cluster level baffled reactor. And after that, we have just kind of let it because this was like a very spread out site. Uh, after the baffled reactor and then aerobic filter, we just let it recharge the groundwater because it was like about uh, 17 acres of land and we had just 50 houses. So this was, uh, uh, and uh, so the subsurface, when we, we reuse that water actually for uh, gardening the community gardens where they were growing avenue trees and all that. So this was just kind of trying to say that you can work with different terrains. Like this was a baffled reactor that we did. Uh, we actually made it as part of the steps going down to the valley because as you see in the first photograph, the site is actually a valley. So you can integrate these things as part of your landscape. This is another place where we try to do it. This is basic, just to explain that you can do it with basic civil construction. Uh, this is another small community level system. This is actually a part of the tsunami rehabilitation in Talangambadi where you have actually each of the houses have their own toilets. The, the sewage is piped and taken to a cluster level treatment system and um, uh, and treated actually. In, now in Anapi also we are doing one such similar cluster level system. Uh, this is another small community in, uh, near Nagpur actually where again the wastewater is treated at a community level and uh, so this is a community level treatment system. Uh, this is again like a small office, this is our own office uh, in Kochi where again to kind of show that you can actually treat it all as part of your landscape. So we have the baffled reactor not below the ground, this is a planted filter. This is where we actually collect the water and reuse it. This is the baffled reactor that we have actually done below the ground. Uh, these are slightly larger systems where again you can't see the baffled reactor because it's below the ground. This is how your planted gravel filter will look. This is actually a very high end uh, yoga retreat. So it's actually part of, very much part of the garden space. And there's a large pond where the wastewater is collected and from here they reuse it for uh, their irrigation. This is another project, it's actually a heritage project uh, which is near Kollamgur, that is uh, north of Kerala, uh, northeast of Kerala actually. Uh, this, this particular project has won a lot of recognition from the Pollution Control Board for the, uh, for the quality of treatment. So it's one of the best working DWOT systems that uh, probably we have done. So this is under, the constru under construction uh, happening. This is how it went finally and actually in this particular DWOTS we try to experiment growing a lot of herbs uh, in the uh, in the planted gravel filter also which is quite interesting to actually dry out and uh, then we had the last polishing pond which had a lot of water lilies and all that so it's, these systems you can actually develop as close to a natural ecosystem as is possible in this room. Uh, this is one of the bigger, uh, among the very big, uh, biggest of DWOT system that CDD has done. This is for Arvindai Hospital in Pondicherry, which treats about 3 lakh liters of water every day. It's now working for the last almost 10 years or more, I think almost 20 years or something. Uh, so you can see that this is their entire baffled reactor and aerobic filter, which is completely under their parking areas. And this is the large planted gravel filter and the polishing pond, which again has been integrated into the landscape. So this is how it was when it was under construction and uh, the other photo is after completion. This is how it is uh, as of now. So basically, so after doing several hundreds of uh, smaller uh,
building level system, be for a house, a housing colony, a hospital, or whatever and all that, there has always been this thing to kind of trying to scale it up to a town level, whether you can address it to a slightly larger level. So we have tried to work on DWATS as probably trying to integrate it to existing sewage networks in places uh, it, or it can also help as I said in many places the uh, centralized systems are designed but very often they don't take care of the future expansion so this can actually help in demand management that is reduce the load on existing centralized utilities and delaying setting up of new ones the, thereby saving on capital investments and point of cost and as I said it helps in recycling of nutrients for ecological balance and one significant thing which I think we'll come to when we talk about Alepi is that the, you can, there is much more of community involvement that you can do when you are doing a decentralized system as compared to a centralized system. A centralized system, we all know that none of even people like us who we claim to be educated and knowing and all that, we don't even know what kind of systems the government is coming up. There are consultants coming from here and there and all that and uh, trying to do something. So, common man doesn't get to know anything about what is happening where you don't even have access to such places to go and see what is actually happening in a cities whereas in a decentralized system you have an opportunity to engage with the community and make them take responsibility for that that is one of the significant things that we have tried in RFP also to get people to own that your waste is your problem kind of thing so we have done uh, quite a bit of trying to experiment on uh, projects at the city level. This was a project that we did for the for, a, for rejuvenating one Nala in Pune. It was called the Bairoba Nala. We did it way back in 2007. We did the studies. So it had about 12 kilometers of length. And what happens is that Pune, uh, the Pune city claims that they have about 90% sewerage network. I don't know whether any of you are from Pune, but the, uh, the thing is that uh, there might be the sewerage networks, but there are so many places which cannot be connected to your sewerage network because of gradient or whatever and all that. So ultimately, a lot of these untreated wastewater finds its way to the Nala, which is the case with every town and city as you know. So we took this one Nala, which is about 12 kilometers, and we did a whole analysis of the, the catchment of the Nala. We worked on all those things and we found that about 19.5 mld of wastewater is actually flow finding its way into the Nala. This was a kind of initial study, so we looked at the upstream, the midstream, and the downstream parts of it. I'm not going into the detail. So what we then worked out as a solution for the for rejuvenating the Nala is that the first thing we said is that we have to actually prevent further encroachments into the Nala, which is something that we all find everywhere, isn't it? This is like a place where somebody will just do one wall and then it extends again, extends. So we said that let us actually physically put fencings which define the catchment of the or the boundary of the Nala. So probably have like a fencing, but you have openings. You it's not like you're not you're totally cutting off people, but you have access at every 500 meters or something. And then we said that we can actually do the treatment along the banks of the Nala and create a green walkway. So that was the whole concept. So you can actually create uh, an almost 12 kilometer long into two uh, green walkways if you are treating the water and letting it flow into it. So this is probably how we thought. So you have these multiple uh, inlets into this is schematic thing, multiple inlets into the Nala. And uh, this is probably the dry flow of the Nala, but you still have space on both sides to actually treat it. But the issue is that very often, uh, where your wastewater is discharged, you may not have space to actually put up your treatment system. So we designed something. So this is a schematic section. So what we said is that let us fence off the sites. Let us put the treatment systems on the side of the Nala. We have so we have the anaerobic systems below the walkways on both sides, and then you have the planted gravel filters along the side of the Nala, and you let the treated water into the the Nala itself and you do a lot of aeration and flow forms and all that in the Nala so that that actually helps in the further uh, aeration of the system. So to take care of this issue that where you are waste, wastewater is generated you may not have land. What we worked out is that you, we, we suggested that we can run a long sewer all along the length of the Nala. 
and uh, at every point where the wastewater comes and there is space available, we do a modular system of say uh, 50 cubic meters or something that we actually decided that 50 cubic meter was a good volume. So you put up treatment units wherever you have space and you have a flow dividing system such that only 50 cubic meters enters into the treatment system. The rest flows again through the main sewer. In the next area where you have land, you put another two or three systems. So wherever you have land available, you put in treatment modules and let the water treat it. So and flow back into the Nala. So that was the so this was all these details how we worked out on how you can actually control the flow into a treatment system. And uh, we decided to put in this uh, prefabricated uh, baffle reactor units. Uh, the detail for the planted gravel filters and uh, we also suggested that there could be a lot of aeration inside the water as well as have these things like flow forms so you kind of improve the flow of water into the Naga. So this was actually taken very well but of course uh, that's what we come to when you are actually dealing with uh, large systems, the kind of processes through our government process to kind of get acceptance to actually experiment these systems is very very difficult. So uh, it was taken very well, it went through a lot of discussions but it never kind of came to an execution level. Uh, similarly, we also tried to, but it gave, it gave us a lot of insight into how you can actually tackle urban water bodies. It's not like, uh, uh, it's not an impossible task to resolve or something and we did the entire calculations, everything and all was done at that point also. Another opportunity was actually to try and work on a decentralized uh, approach to the entire sewage and wastewater treatment system of a small town. So this is actually a small town called Taini, which is uh, in Tamil Nadu. It's a beautiful, small, picturesque town, about 1 lakh population. Uh, they of course didn't have any existing underground sewage system. So most of the, as I said, most of the middle class and upper middle class also had uh, septic tanks. But uh, some of the smaller economically weaker sections had community level sanitation. But even that was not very effective. Uh, there were not too many industries. But um, whatever was there also was let off to the water body. So eventually, so this is a kind of scene. I think I don't have to go into it. Typical scene that you find in any of our small and big towns. And eventually, Taini had some three or four large, beautiful lakes. Uh, with the water found its way into these lakes and the lakes were beginning to die actually. So that is when they decided that they wanted to set up a, uh, some kind of a sewage treatment facility. So they actually had got Wilbur Smith to make a, a big detailed feasibility study for the sewage system and all that. And they came up with this understanding that almost 50-60 percentage of the whole cost was actually going into running these sewers, which was a huge amount for a small town like Thaini. Plus the fact that they wanted at about uh, 7 acres or something of land in the outskirts to set up the sewage treatment plant, which the local farmers made a big hue and cry as they were like stuck on what to do. So what we uh, suggested on the other hand is that uh, we suggested the same thing. Yeah, so we suggested that uh, let there be, as we said, in, as we did in the smaller communities, we suggested that there can be household level small septic tanks or settlers and you can actually, Thaini the advantage is that the water table is not very high, there was some amount of gradient so it was probably a softer challenge for us to work with. So we said that then let there be small diameter sewers, so you know, no, when you have a settler, you are piping only your effluent, so you can use smaller diameter pipes, more shallow gradients and then you take it to a cluster level and uh, you have the treatment systems and after treatment you can actually reuse it uh, for watering your avenue trees or plants or even parks and all that. Uh, for community based sanitation systems we said we can actually do the toilets and have their own treatment systems. Larger building complexes we suggested that make it mandatory through rules that they set up their own treatment systems to have it. And, um, uh, we also worked out the methodology on how these things can be worked out. So we said that actually there can be a, a company or an NGO can be formed to can take the responsibility of uh, working with the municipality to actually install and maintain these DWOTS units uh, to involve local civil contractors to actually make the production. And uh, then the only systems that these uh, the town will have to take care of would be the desludging part of it. As I said, to have it, have a fecal sludge management unit and do the desludging once in two or three years might be the responsibility of the municipality. 
again uh, this was this went through a lot of uh, discussions and debates and uh, it even went up to the Tamil Nadu uh, water and sewerage board on whether it can be dried out and all that but the biggest challenge right now in our country on doing anything at a city level is that we are still uh, stuck with our knowledge which is like maybe from the pre-independence time. So uh, as we, as you all also know that what we are learning and what all the decision makers are learned are still the knowledge of the West where we're going for centralized system and all that. So when we talk about decentralized and having to de-sludge and all that it faces a lot of opposition. The other thing is that our codes are still bound by all these, again, the Western standards. Like if you are even looking at something like BOD5 and all that, they were actually developed by the British for their climatic conditions and their uh, waste uh, quantity and all those. I mean, uh, basically, BOD5 was developed in UK considering as a time that the wastewater took for uh, for the for for it to actually reach a sea in their in their climatic condition and their kind of distance, which probably is not relevant to our conditions. So these kind of things, unless they change, it's kind of very difficult to kind of um, make any headway. And uh, then of course you have, when you're working with the government departments, you understand that it's very, very, very difficult to actually move on things to kind of get that decision made and nobody wants to kind of change the status quo. So these are the kind of things that we have also been battling with. But at the same time, as I said initially, right now there is a lot of policy changes that is being happened. There is a lot of thrust that is going into uh, improving urban uh, sanitation infrastructure particularly, there are projects like Amrut and Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and the smart cities missions etc which are actually stressing on citizen friendly and sustainable infrastructure. There is a national urban sanitation policies which is actually urging cities and towns to use appropriate technology options uh, as per their needs and all that not necessarily having to go to large centralized systems alone. We also have the change happening that the our population is probably much more or the awareness is also changing. You have people who are traveling in different parts of the country. Everyone has the aspiration to become like a Singapore or a, at least like a Sri Lanka for that matter. So there is a push from the population also to make a change. And it's a fact that the technologies are also are improving. Every I mean, what was probably 20 years back, you know, there is a lot of streamlining in it. So I conclude this part of the presentation. So what? Coming to the Alapi intervention, what we have been trying to do in Alapi is that we were we had this opportunity where we had a very dynamic leadership. So as you know, it's actually the present finance minister who himself has kind of spearheaded the the project. So there is a dynamic leadership happening, and uh, there is this team of us who have been working. So we're just hoping with Alapi that that if we can bring the paradigm shift into a public uh, infrastructure project. So. That is kind of setting the background for other people.